Hello, one and all. This is my review of That Time I Reincarnated as Slime, Season 2, Episode 3. And I have to say, I know King Gazelle was mostly joking when he referred to Rimuru as a demon lord seducer, but I feel like that title is fairly accurate. I mean, there are 10 demon lords total, and Rimuru was on fairly good terms with three of them. I mean, one is plotting against him, but that's still pretty good odds. I mean, he won Malima over by giving her honey, and then 20 minutes later, they were besties for resties. He won over Carrion by, I guess, not murdering Phobia, and now they have a full trade agreement going, even though Carrion does, I think, zero trade with any other nation. And King Gazelle doesn't even know it, but Rimuru was also on fairly good terms with Romarus, the pint-sized demon lord who he won over after he broke her toy, but then promised to build her new one, and then she helped save his students. So I think it's fair to say that they're on fairly decent terms. And speaking of the king, let's not forget that when Rimuru first met him, he was in chains, standing before the king in court, about to be sentenced to 30 years of hard labor. And, you know, one sword fight later, suddenly they're best friends, with the king even referring to Rimuru as his junior, because they trained under the same sword master. Oh, and then there's Vester, who was the entire reason why they were in court. Don't forget, he introduced himself by pouring out his drink on top of Rimuru, and now he's one of Rimuru's most loyal followers, and his best researcher with his second best researcher being Gabiru, who first appeared when he attempted to overthrow Rimuru's village and make himself their new leader. Benny Maro in the Ogre's Induction was even more violent, as he attempted to murder Rimuru because he believed that he was in cahoots with a masked Majin that attacked his hometown. And then we have Ranga, who don't forget, Rimuru first met Ranga when he murdered his father. Yeah, Rimuru killed Ranga's father, the head of the pack, and suddenly he became their new leader. So yeah, Rimuru's greatest power is his ability to basically charm and seduce anyone he meets to the point where they want to serve him, where they want to be by his side. And speaking of seduction, wow! When we got to the nightclub and all the ladies were arguing over who got to squeeze him, I thought to myself, did this just become an episode of Interspecies Reviewers? And then Gopta tried really, really hard to impress the ladies, but they teased him a little bit too much, and then it very quickly turned into an episode of Goblin Slayer. I mean, seriously, this scene was in the light novel, it was in the manga, but it was played off more as just, a, you know, a little joke of, oh, he got a bad nosebleed. No! This was violent and disturbing as blood just poured out of his nose and eyes, splashing on all the girls. It just, no, that was so... Just, no, that was so very, very unpleasant to watch. I mean, seriously. Uh, I'm going to say it's a big mistake on the animator's part right there, just to make it so extreme like that. Though I guess the girls might have observed it as they were teasing him just, you know, a little bit too much. Though once again, I really do have to admire Rimuru here. I mean, yes, his speech was absolutely 100% a flop with him stuttering way too much and him just basically coming off as being weak and a pushover, which is why Gazelle gave a score of zero. But he turned this trip to the nightclub, a chance to blow off steam with his buddies as a business opportunity, giving out the apple brandy to the hostess so that she could, you know, offer it up to customers and tell them, oh, this is from the Monster Nation. This is from Tempest. You should check them out. They have some really amazing products. And, you know, just figure out exactly how much he should charge for it, how much people are actually willing to pay for this sort of product. Oh, I love his business mind. But then when they leave the nightclub, things go very, very dark, very, very fast. As Shuna shows up and yeah, she looked scary. I mean, she looked really, really scary. I mean, yeah, Xion was there as well, but she did not look anywhere near as threatening or as overwhelmingly terrifying. Oh boy, this episode really did a good job showing the difference between these two. You know, as Shuna's very delicately pouring the drinks for Rimuru and Gazelle and all them, Xion is chugging it and passing out. <laughs> oh god, I mean, seriously? Rimuru, your secretary just got so drunk she passed out in the middle of your meeting with a foreign dignitary. That's not a good look for you. I mean, I know you're worried about her temper tantrum if you left her behind, but this... This is probably worse. I mean, thank God Gazelle and Dolph managed to laugh it off and not turn this into, you know, a freaking international incident. Other foreign dignitaries would certainly not be that forgiving. And it is very clear that Gazelle is actually rather fond of Rimuru and is doing everything in his power to help him. I mean, yes, he was incredibly critical after his speech, but that was only because, you know, he didn't want to make those same mistakes the next time he gave a speech. He doesn't want the rest of the world thinking, you know, they can just step on Rimuru and do whatever they want to him because, oh, he just wants peace. And Rimuru really should have taken that advice a little more at heart. I mean, seriously, when he gave that apology to Xi'an and Shuna later on, he made the exact same freaking mistakes. 
<laughs> well, hopefully he's learned from it now as he has to eat Xi'an's cooking for the next week, which, quite frankly, might actually kill him. I know he's fairly strong and fairly invincible. That really, really could kill him. I'm pretty sure only Gopta has poison resistance at this point. <laughs> oh, poor Rimuru. Poor, poor Rimuru. Though I am wondering if he's actually going to have to do that punishment. I mean, again, the timeline here is definitely screwed up from the light novel. I mean, this whole thing should have happened weeks before Rimuru actually left to go visit Anglossia to go visit Shizue's students. But with the current timeline, Rimuru might only be a few days away from retiring as a teacher and leaving Anglossia for good, which would bring us into the next arc, which point they're probably going to be too busy to actually enforce that punishment. So curious about that. We also got to see a bit more of Yulon at the end of the episode. Yay! The spy that Clayman sent to has now infiltrated Yom's party, which, you know, is very, very bad. Though, it does look like she's being won over by Yom's winning smile just a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Probably not. Yeah, no, probably not. Oh, and fun fact, at this point, Light Novel was also revealed that she's been watching Rimuru for a very long time. She was actually there when Malim first beat up Phobio. And even though she was miles away and hidden by magic, she still bolted out of there as soon as she thought Malim spotted her. Which, you know, she probably did. Malim has scary good eyesight. I mean, seriously scary. And based on the title, next episode is going to be all about Thalmuth scheming in the backgrounds. What it is they're plotting. Ooh, uh, we heard actually a little about them this episode, with Lizelle referring to their king as being far too greedy. Uh, at this point in Light Novel, we got a little bit more history about them. Uh, basically, when Yom was first introduced, we had a whole mini-chapter about, about the noble that was in charge of his territory. He was basically super corrupt, which was fairly common in Thalmuth. Uh, basically, he spent all the money the kingdom gave him for defense, for securing up their border, which, you know, bordered the force of Jura, making it a hot spot for monster invasions on himself, on his own luxurious lifestyle. So when the orc disaster showed up, he was in deep doo-doo. So he basically rounded up a group of prisoners and said, hey, go figure out what's going on in the forest and report back to me. And those prisoners were Yom and his gang! Yay! And that's how they became the champions of peace after they met Rimuru. So certainly not a great kingdom, but uh, I actually do kind of like Thalmuth's king a little bit. Uh, it's a rather complicated story. I'll get into that more way, way down the road. But yeah, so very excited to see the kingdom for the first time, see what it is they're plotting in the shadows. And we still are missing one very important thing that was cut from season one of the anime. I mean, there was one very small detail in this episode that did seem to imply that the scene that we're missing did happen in the past, so I'm guessing it's going to be a flashback that fills in, you know, that last blank, and then we can get going to the main plotline, the next big arc of the story, and oh boy, I can't wait for that. I cannot freaking wait for that. Oh, actually, one other thing before I forget. Poor little Gobza. Yeah, so uh, he ended up routing out Rimuru and the rest of them to Shion and Shuna by accident. But really, you can't blame him all that much because he is really, really stupid. I mean, just so utterly stupid. It's not even funny. Well, it's a little bit funny. He's also in love with Princess Shuna, as he called her. So yeah, he can't actually lie to her, even if he had the mental faculties to do so. But anyway, yeah, let me know if you think all this down below. Uh, what do you think of Rimuru's speech? Do you think it made him come off as too weak? How about when Gopta's head almost exploded and he poured blood in all the girls? Do you think that was a step too far? I feel like that was a little bit unnecessary for this episode. I mean, a simple nosebleed and him falling in his face would have been fine. This was grotesque. It was very, very grotesque. And what do you think of Rimuru's punishment for sneaking out and not telling the girls? Uh, do you think it's too harsh? Do you think it's just harsh enough? Uh, very curious about that. I mean, let's not forget, though, Rimuru is their leader. He is their boss. He is arguably their god. And yet they're punishing him. There's definitely something a little bit hinky about that. <laughs> oh, I love it. But let me know if you got all that down below. And be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. And until then... Peace!